Salut à tous Et bonjour Aujourd'hui, nous allons tester des pédaliers. Enfin, pas nous euh, Oui, on va les faire tester en fait à un pilote que certains d'entre vous vont reconnaître, qui est Gustavo Menezes, qui euh, est un pilote d'endurance, qui a déjà remporté le, le championnat WEC en LMP2 en 2016, qui a remporté Le Mans en LMP2 pareil en, en 2016. Alors, en fait, Gustavo, il se construit un, un rig sim racing, et du coup, il a besoin d'un pédalier. Mais lequel Et voilà Alors lequel Donc ce qu'on a fait, on lui a emmené quatre pédaliers à tester. Donc là, on va remercier évidemment Azetec qui nous a envoyé le pédalier Invicta, Eusingvel qui nous ont envoyé l'Ultimate Plus, Simagic, bah, en fait un peu sans le savoir parce qu'on a pris le pédalier que Lucas nous avait prêté, donc merci Lucas pour lui faire tester, et bien sûr le Venim Atrax qui là, bah, c'était le nôtre aussi. Ouais. Parce que tout simplement, Venim n'en avait plus en stock, donc on, on s'est dit, bah, écoute, on va prendre le nôtre. Et donc, on a mis les pédaliers dans la valise et on est parti. Voilà, alors est-ce qu'on peut donner un peu les critères aussi qu'on a utilisés pour choisir les pédaliers Est-ce qu'on les a pas oui. emmenés au hasard, en fait, ceux-là Bien sûr. Premier critère de choix, euh, le prix. Que ce soit pas non plus euh, trop élevé, ouais. donc on était dans la barre des 1000 euros. Il fallait rester voilà. autour des 1000 euros, 1100, ça passe encore, mais il fallait pas qu'on monte à 2000, 2005. Il fallait des pédaliers qui soient accessibles au grand public aussi, qu'un qu maximum de joueurs... Sérieux, ça reste, des, ça reste des prix quand même assez élevés, oui. mais que ce soit dans, dans un budget raisonnable pour quelqu'un qui se construit un bon rig sim racing. Voilà, le deuxième critère de choix, c'était que les marques veuillent bien nous prêter des pédaliers. Parce que bah, évidemment, pas toutes ne veulent se prêter à ce jeu, parce oui. qu'on va en tester plusieurs en côte à côte, donc du coup, euh, forcément, il y en a qui ne sont pas très à l'aise avec ce genre d'exercice. Donc là, bah, on remercie voilà. encore une fois, ouais, c'est les marques qui ont bien voulu accepter, parce que euh, bah, ce n'est pas, pas tout le monde. Oui, puis c'est pas évident de se mettre en concurrence directe, d'avoir l'avis d'un pilote d'endurance. Donc là, vraiment, merci à ces quatre mmh. marques-là. Et puis, il y a un dernier critère de choix et qui, était, qui était, selon nous, le plus important, c'est qu'il corresponde à son style de conduite. Oui, il fallait que le frein, il fallait qu'on puisse en fait régler le frein comme lui apprécie les freins en ses bagnoles. Et oui, parce que évidemment, il lui faut un frein qui corresponde à ses attentes, qui corresponde à son style de pilotage. C'est un pilote du coup d'endurance qui pilote euh, cette année par exemple la Peugeot 9 x 8 euh, qui est aussi habitué aux formules. Et fatalement, il faut quelque chose qui corresponde un petit peu à cet univers-là, à ce qu'il apprécie lui. Et on a choisi du coup des pédaliers vraiment qui correspondent à ça. Pour ceux qui ne connaissent pas encore Gustavo, qui sont peut-être nouveaux sur la chaîne, vous pouvez aller voir, on a fait une interview avec lui et puis d'autres pilotes professionnels et des simracers professionnels il y a quelques mois à Satori chez Peugeot pendant les 24 heures du monde virtuel et du coup on a eu l'avis de plusieurs pilotes pro et de simracers pro sur qu'est-ce que c'est un bon frein en sim racing et qu'est-ce que c'est un, un bon ressenti de frein pour un pilote pro. Eh bien laissons parler maintenant Gustavo qui va nous présenter ses différents pédaliers et surtout les tester. Ouais. First of all, thank you Sammy Flo for having me on the channel today. Honestly, changed my life and my day because I've had the blessing of having this sim lab rig at home but couldn't make a decision on what pedal set I wanted. Oh, sorry, that's my bad. On what pedal set I wanted for the for the sim. So today we started with the Venom Atrax. It's a, it's a beautiful pedal set, as you can see. Alors, Venom, c'est une marque française. Ça a été créé par le fils du fondateur de Migal. C'est des gars qui fabriquent des F3 et des F4. Donc, ils ont utilisé l'expertise qu'ils avaient en fabrication de formules pour créer un pédalier sim racing. Et c'est ce premier pédalier qu'on va tester avec Gustavo aujourd'hui. And what do we do here, is there? So you can uh, see the curves, you can calibrate the brake. So this is my setup, so you can change it, of course. So you have it very linear, and then 100% is just big. So I'm just checking, so if yeah. I want to bring that down like this. Yeah, yeah, you can do whatever It's lighter on the initial, so you can bring this down a little bit, for example, and then it just gets there a little bit quicker. I don't want to uh, vary too much because I think for the fairness of the pedals, if we just go on standard, you know, and then I ah, leave. and then you're back in 60 kilos. I was in uh, 87. 87? My setup yeah, is. Uh, yeah, but that's actually super smart because otherwise, man, you lock immediately. Yeah. Man, look at that. 120. Wow. <laughs> okay, I do 95. I go cycling in the morning tomorrow. I do uh, three and a half hours on the bike. Man, there's a lot of free play in this guy's settings, but I can adjust later. And you can adjust in game too, so that's where it's complicated. Yeah. It's always frustrating after, like to, to do it custom when you're finished, you adjust the DDU unit angle to get everything like me. If I'm, once we finish and choose the favorite pedal, I'm gonna move the pedals the whole pedal plate further back so that I can have the steering closer mm -hmm. 
the pedals further. You can adjust every. You can adjust the front of the seat to drop more or raise. So it's. And then once it's done, you never use it. You never touch it again. <laughs> Man, it's uh, now it's starting to feel okay. Ah, good. Look, <laughs> I mean, I'm driving like shit, but in general, it's not bad. Man, the pedals, it's uh, they're, the, your setup feels better than what I ran in the virtual limo. They're just the travel, it's quite nice with like this kind of soft buildup and then quite stiff in the end. I think it's not bad at all. I'm gonna put a F3 because I can actually brake proper hard. Look, I show you, it looks really clean to be honest. Uh, the last run. Can use more track. Ah, oh, no, it's okay. Yeah, man, it's nice the pedals though. Yeah, really nice. What's really cool is that you can customize the pedals. You really have the feel that they are coming out of a single seater car, which is actually the case. My first opinion is that, and it, don't take this in a negative way, maybe it wasn't the all out best in any specific subject, but I thought it was one of the best compromise of quality of the pedal, um, aesthetic, uh, braking consistency. Obviously, uh, the guys had already set up the, the bump rubber at a stiffness that I believed would be quite good, and it was. The throttle travel, everything, it, it, it's a really nice pedal set, and I'd say for the, for the money, it's, uh, it's, it's something very good, and you will not be disappointed. I think uh, straight out the box, you take a product out that 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 works very well, and immediately I was up, I'm able to get some con consistent times. Um, the program and the software that no one really discusses this, but the software in the background that you can actually control the pedal modulation, it's quite simple, uh, quite basic, which is good and bad. I'd say um, after we pulled out the Acetec pedals, which is a hydraulic pedal set also beautiful um, one thing i will say out of all the pedals we've tested so far these guys win on one thing they come out of the box pretty much ready to go just like this um, obviously if you've had the patience of building up a sim rig i don't think you you mind the extra 20 minutes to build the pedal so it's not a, a specific game changer but for us today that are just trying four or five pedal sets this was incredible comes out the box beautiful led strip here so if you're into aesthetic Uh, it, it really does look good. Alors, l'Azetec Invicta, ça a été créé donc, par la marque Azetec. C'est un pédalier hydraulique. Azetec, c'est une marque danoise qui s'est lancée sur le sim racing il y a à peu près deux ans maintenant. Et leur objectif, c'est tout simplement de faire des pédaliers et du matériel sim racing qui donnent un ressenti aussi proche que possible du réel. Oh I don't want to do more than that. Yeah, perfect. So, okay. And then we can... Uh, so then I press the maximum. Yeah, and press. after that you can lower. I think that's a comfortable amount. Personally on this one I like to have a little... Uh, yeah, little I'm gonna do the this. same thing now. I need 
get softer. Honestly, it's too hard on this seat. I need a better seat. Because uh, uh, you have to take your back fully into the... Oh, you can go on the calibration page. Yeah. And lower this, uh, this bar. That looks good. That's sick. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Acetec's not doing bad. This is uh, really, really cool to, to be able to to change the lighting in the in the pedal set, but the pedal map part is uh, really, really nice. I'm happy with that. So pedal map, uh, you don't really need. Sweet, it's done, huh? Yeah. We go drive. Stiff still. <laughs> How's it going? I just changed the rubber. Yeah. What is this percentage? It's the play? Yeah. Here I have uh, two or three millimeters with uh, nothing. Okay, because otherwise you're dragging the brake. Yeah. Okay. And then, okay, and here I have a hot stage. Okay. Try that. Okay. Holy shit. Look. Ah, that's a bit of And is he... You know he was supposed to drive for Peugeot, huh? <laughs> Kevin. He tested with yeah. us. Uh, he did uh, the first test of the car all with us. And then they called him to Formula One. Oh my god, it's a proper beast. You put it... Uh, Nice and strong breaking, huh? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's just say you will not use the acid tech pedals with salts. <laughs> I'm struggling to stop. I have to go a bit lighter than you. You're a beast. Okay, let's see now. I just took it down to 60, 61 bar from, from 75. Let's try the other um, bumper over. I think I'm curious. Yeah. Not bumper over the. No, that. So what's the difference in this? This is the end stiff. Really soft, really hard. And where are we now? Is we green? are around here. At the moment. I think we try the green. Let's try the yellow and then uh, yep. I'm gonna call Mozart now. Whatever, I just drive and... Oh. Hey, it's not bad the feeling, huh? Should we change pedals? I'm happy with these. Okay. Like I'm, I really like it. I would say my first opinion, I did around two hours of driving. We changed the bump rubbers in here. Uh, three times to find the one that that suited the pedal stroke that I liked and we finally did find one which was more or less medium range um, That I liked a lot. I would say if you're a junior single-seater or formula car driver um, Coming from open-wheel experience. This is a pedal set for you. 
um, with the hydraulic pedal together with the bump rubber, you can get a really nice travel in the way of a soft pedal going stiff towards the end. Um, once I got used to it, it did take a bit. This one, I got on and I felt quite okay immediately. And maybe because I've driven it in the past, but it was immediately quite consistent. This one, I had to learn how the pedal stroke worked, how it felt, but once I got going on it, I really did like the pedal travel, the stiffness at the end. Um, there is some modifications, I believe, thanks to Mr. Magnuson. Um, we had some spacer in here that helped the travel length a little bit. Um, and once we got the bump rubber to have the softness in the beginning with the stiffness at the end, with the correct length, uh, it was an amazing pedal set. On top of that, the last thing I would say is, I'm gonna put these down, is the software on the back of this, it's, it's really nice. It's really, really nice to modulate for beginners, and I'm not saying the pedals, but the, the software in the back, very easy. This one is a lot more complex, but somehow the graphs are still very easy to follow. You can, by two clicks, change the pedal stroke curve completely. You can set the maximum pressure very easily. Um, I like this, I like the modulation of this, and if, if I were to choose between the two for myself, I would go with the Acetec because it suits my driving style. As I said, I think money aside from all these pedals, we know that the amount that you've already spent on your sim rig, you're, you're looking for good quality. All of these are good quality. This is a great compromise from A to Z. I think these are a little bit more in the formula car slash prototype driving style. Hence the reason I would pick these over these. Um, and uh, I, I have to say thank you guys for getting us these two pedal sets, both amazing. You cannot go wrong with either. Finally today, I'm not showing you them right now because they're actually still bolted on the sim rig. We just finished our day. I tried the Hussingvel Ultimate pedals. I heard a lot of amazing things about them. I've always wanted to try them. On passe au Eusingvelt Ultimate Plus, donc Eusingvelt, marque qui vient des Pays-Bas, vous connaissez tous, ça fait partie des énormes marques de pédalier sim racing. C'est parti pour les essais. Ok, so, I can see here, force is set to, I've already learned one thing I like, I'm gonna go to 70, ok, let's just try it, huh? Mm. I like the travel. I might need a slightly stiffer spring, but I kind of like the travel because again in the simulator, since you already have this lack of feeling of movement, having the stroke is good. It's just maybe a bit too soft. But oh man, the performance on track, it's uh, not bad, huh? I like that the stroke is a bit longer. You can modulate during the corner of it, you know? I want to try with a bit stiffer spring uh, or bump rubber. Should be correct, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I almost feel no difference. Oh, yeah. I feel like it just kind of added like an earlier stop to the end, but the travel is the same. I'm gonna try again different springs again. Yeah. It's one thing I will say, huge credit. Super easy to change them though. The stiffer set, it's look, you see, you just wall. Okay. The stiffer set, look, you can try it. For me, you'll see it's super soft, but the stiffer set, it's just hard, you know? There's no in between. Um, I still like it, but I just think it's, you're gonna hate it, I think. Oh, it's a different one. But here with the brake, it's uh, too soft ah. to travel. Like, it's I like the last uh, film. Yeah, the but the film. problem that I found when I changed the other one, here, stop the car quick. I just do a super quick pit, pit stop, one moment, <laughs> so you can see. For me, it went extreme, you know, like uh, I just do now. And just open the Hussing Belt program quickly and put it on stiff so you can, uh, so you can, uh, so it's correct. You'll see what I mean, like the, the difference is too much and it's one step difference. Oh yeah, okay. Now it's but another world. But it's another world, but for me it's right. It, for me it's too far in the now you have no fear. It's one is too soft and now this one it's like okay the tip in is soft and then the rest is hard and you have no feeling on the brake. So for me with the missing foot, you have to go soft. I think the car is damaged, huh? For me so far. 
My opinion is it's a really nice GT car set. It's next up. Because you have feeling for the modulation. Yeah. It's a little bit better now. With 95, it's uh, it's okay. I can sure. understand. Yeah. I like it. The stroke of the soft pedal, but it's too soft. Yeah. Okay, I, I can understand now. Yeah. It's uh, it's better. Wanna try? You can do a lap or two if you want. I'll try. I'll try. Yeah, but I still just, uh, I don't, it's not bad, but I have no feeling, you know, like if I'm at 75% braking efficiency or 100. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's better than it was, but yeah, it's better. I almost so. prefer to go on the super soft and just drive with my socks yeah. on this pedal set. It's weird, like, I feel like I have to be in between, you know? <laughs> I'm losing time already. Why are you telling me to slow down more? Watch the time loss now, all right? Okay, let's try. The gust setting. <laughs> you see the TC, the pit lane limiter saves you. I'll take that. I'm gonna try one thing now. I'm gonna do just the, uh, cause this is actually pretty decent. Man, that was a clean lap, huh? Yeah. The travel, it's really nice for modulation. Mm -hmm. The stiffness is the issue. Like in a perfect world, they need to come out with something a bit better than bump rubbers, you know? I think bump rubbers are a bit on a limit with the, uh... oh yeah, look at that. Have you done the big C-ring? Yeah. I hate the blue line. Man, I almost died here a few times this weekend. It's uh, nice. Man, look at that. It's a clean lap for the first lap, huh? And they were great. They were very different coming from the Acetec pedals that are hydraulic. And we're going into a spring and bump rubber set, which is traditionally more simple. But the software in the back is a little bit closer to the level of Acetec in the way of, let's say, the trend of the, of the brake curves. Um, one thing I will say with the hissing felt that I really liked, it was super, super quick to change bump rubbers to the right stiffness. I'd say 30 seconds from when you hop out of the sim to adapting the bump rubbers and going. So something that with the Acetec I felt would maybe take two or three days to, to try out all the features. You can probably get done in a half the time with the hissing belt, although the downside, you do not have that hydraulic feel, which to me is the last 20% of the brake where you really get that stiff feel. But with, uh, with bump rubbers or metal shims, let's say the, the hard spacers that come with the hissing felt, it becomes very digital. You have a soft bump rubber, a super hard um, spacer. And we tried a lot of things mis mixing bump rubbers together with the hard spacers to try to simulate a ramp up to a harder feel at the end. It didn't quite give me the feel of the hydraulic uh, pedal from the Acetec, which, which was really, really incredible. Um, so that was the downside of the thing about, but the positive is the, the brake stroke is quite long. And to me, I think for a sim setup, it is really nice to have a bit of a longer stroke. That doesn't relate directly to what I have in the race car, but it's something that while I was on the sim, I was able to modulate a lot easier and have a feel of the car. I mean, that's the thing that we always miss a little bit in the sim is that little feeling with the car's pitch in the corner. And I felt with the Huzzing Bell, I was able to, to be a little bit less digital and, and play with the pitch of the car. I know that's very specific, but I was able to, to control the car through the apex a lot better with the Husing Belt. So as of right now, I would say the Husing Belt is a great pedal for someone that's maybe never driven a race car, but only spent time in the sim. I think it's, it's a more comfort at home. You can drive in socks, you can drive in shoes, you can dial in the pedal very well. I'd say for someone that's driving more on a GT car, in a rally car, in a sim, I would go with the Husing Felt at the moment. If I were going with a Formula car kind of 
speciality, I would go with the Acetec. So again, it's all personal preference. I think if you, if you can't really make a decision between those two extremes, then you have the Venomatrax, which is a perfect compromise of a little bit of everything. You know, you have a good stroke, not the longest and the, and the smoothest, not the stiffest ending, just a good overall feel, a really strong pedal. So again, each one has its own specialty. I'm a little bit torn right now. Tomorrow we have the Sim Magic pedals to try, which I've been saving for last. We've kind of tried to go between hydraulic to bump stop, back to hydraulic in a way of, of mixing it up and, and really getting. So tomorrow we're gonna try the Sim Magic, then we're probably gonna take our two favorites, which is gonna be a tough decision between the Acetec and the Hussing uh, Belt from today. We're gonna compare it to, to the favorite of the other two and, and come out with what I believe is my favorite for my driving style. Again, that doesn't mean one is better than the other. It's, it's a tough choice. Um, I think hopefully with the information I gave, it helps you choose the direction you would like to go, but they're all incredible pedals. And I will say, when you're looking for ultimate performance in the sim, I think your pedals and I think your DDU are probably two of the biggest performance gains. Uh, today I was playing with setups and to be honest, although there was time to be found, there was more time in the brake pedals and the DDU modulation. So um, don't forget don't forget that at the end of the day when you're, when you're looking at a super special steering wheel or aluminum frame versus this or a better seat, make sure to take the time to get the right pedals and the right DDU unit because I think that's where you're gonna find ultimate performance. So thank you guys for watching. We have more coming. It's gonna be a night for us. It's gonna be 10 seconds for you. So we're gonna to cut to it now and I look forward to sharing the rest with you. Hello. Hey there. All okay? Yeah, good. How was your night? Yeah, good. Good dinner? Yeah. Magic est une marque chinoise et aujourd'hui Gustavo va tester le pédalier hydraulique P2000. Pas de problème. Enjoy. That looks like a good consistency for me, huh? It's a short stroke, huh? Yeah, but the short is. Like, uh, but I think it could be interesting. I go back to the short track just so we can turn some proper laps. That's cool, huh? And you can change both springs so you can find a good mix, huh? Yeah. Interesting. It's a shame we don't have the kilograms or, or pressure. Yeah. It would be interesting. That's already a, a bit of a drawback for information, you know? Mm. Super short throttle pedal as well, compared to the Hussein belt. That's super, but short enough. It's a good feeling though. The pedal smoothness on the brake pedal, it's quite... Okay, good. It's not like the other ones that it's like light to heavy, it's just consistent. So how do you do more travel on the throttle, for example? Oh, you have a wing here. Oh, let's do it. I like the stiffness, it's perfect. I wish I could go on settings on private testing and iRacing and have like tire warmers. Because <laughs> it's a bit stupid, you know? Like you go out on freezing cold tires when you're just testing stuff, it's... Good, huh? It's the best modulation I've had. Because it's a consistent feeling from start to finish. But man, like look, I'm able to actually drive the car where I want it. Yeah. Alright guys, we are here with the Sim Magic pedals. Didn't think it could get much better with what we had yesterday, but seems to be pretty good. I just went the fastest I've gone so far by a solid half second on a one minute track. So now we go to the big track and see how the performance is. Before. Well, first I have to crash the car, you know, check that it's strong. I think I'm good with this pedal set. I know what I like. It feels really good. I think it's good to switch to something else and then we... Yeah, it's uh, funny to see that you actually raced maybe a little more yeah. than usual. 
I was able to stay on track because I had a consistent yeah. feel. Um, I think straight out the box, it was perfect. I, I probably have to go in the software a bit and adjust the, the max bite force. I think it was still a bit high for me because what happens maybe, or it could be interesting to try a different stiffness. But basically the stroke is super good, but to gain the last 40% of brake efficiency, you're already out of the stroke and then you have to push quite hard. Yeah. So what you have on the brake pedal versus the end, it's quite a big wrap, but mm. all the pedals have the same thing, you know? So, uh, and I think it's just in the race car, you have to remember that you have the G-force pushing. So when you push this, you get more G-force and it helps to push that last bit. Where here you have to increase the, the, the pedal force on the foot, you know? Mm. Uh, where in the, the brake in the car, you smash it and the G-force hits you even harder, so. Um, I like it. I think we should try the Acetec again, and uh, yeah, at the moment, the best suited for me, I think. Ah, nice, mm. okay. Which is interesting, I didn't expect it. Yeah, me neither. Okay guys, it's probably been like five seconds for you. It's been overnight for us, so. Um, today was more difficult than I thought to choose what I would say is my favorite pedal set. Um, we started the day back with the Hissing Belt, which we finished yesterday. And I have to say, it's an amazing pedal set. Uh, aesthetically, on my Simlab rig, uh, it's my favorite. I think just the, the assembly with the, with the spacing here and being able to change the angle of the entire pedal box, depending on your sim setup. So if you have more of a Formula car uh, seating position or GT seating position, you can just change the brackets and you already have this modulation. Um, I'd say out of all of the bump stop kind of um, brake systems, the Hussing Belt Ultimate is my favorite. It is amazing. And I would say this is, this is purely off of my experience. I'm not a professional sim driver. I am a racing driver. Um, and again, it is very, you know, personal, but this is the perfect set for, for someone with maybe a little bit less racing experience, I think. It's the perfect set for someone that's doing more GT racing or for example, rally cross or anything on the sim because it's a softer modulation. Uh, it's hard to pull with the hand, but it's, it's a very smooth modulation. I think in the mid range of something from 20 to 60 bar. So to put that into easier terms, the, the kind of mid range of the, the braking second, third gear corners, the Hussing felt was super, super easy to modulate the pressure so I could control the car a little bit better. Um, and to add a little bit of bias, it's probably my favorite brand as a fan before trying any of these. Um, I always follow them, I know what they do. The packaging, again, aesthetically is, is solid, so you will never go wrong with these pedals. We then went to the Sim Magic pedals, which we hadn't tried yesterday. Um, it is a hydraulic pedal set, but you can change the pedal stroke with these two springs here. And it comes with several different sets. So I believe we took a stiff spring on the bottom and a medium level spring on top together with the hydraulic. And it also has some kind of hydraulic actuator, I believe on the throttle. So the throttle stroke is super linear, super smooth. I believe you can also change the stroke length just uh, quite quickly here, so it's quite nice. Um, I'm gonna go through the downsides quickly because I think it's, it's easier to start there and then highlight the positives. I'd say packaging, not as nice when you see the Hussing belt or the Acetec, kind of everything more integrated uh, and more neatly done. The plastic, uh, when you're spending this kind of money, doesn't feel as nice. But the other thing I would say is the software on the back end. So um, something that you'll be in, end up using a lot, which you choose your pedal stroke, the curvature of the stroke and the maximum pressure you want to, to put. Um, it's a little bit more basic. Um, it's a little bit hard because there's no numeric value. What that means is on the Hussing belt or the Acetec, I can say, I want to put maximum 80 bars or 85 kilos, and that's where maximum brake load is. More than that you lock, less than that you're not maximizing. With this one, there's no numeric maximum. So you genuinely have to go on the program, brake to where you feel is right, and try it on track, and maybe when you were doing the calibration, it wasn't exactly how you feel in the car. So it's a bit more uh, difficult to find the exact window that you want to operate, but, 
on the other side, once I found it, um, it was probably one of my favorite pedals. The hydraulic, after going back and forth, I mean, today I drove two times on the Hussingvelt, two times on this, two times on the Acetec, and the hydraulic pedals have a different consistency on the stroke. And what that means is, with the bump rust rubber or elastomer um, combination on the Hussingvelt, I, I had a very light travel, or not light, but quite, quite one travel, and then as the rubbers get compressed, it gets quite stiff. So when you start, for example, the stroke, it's quite light in the beginning. As I said, that's why I felt I had a lot of modulation as the travel of the pedal was very nice. But in the end, it gets very stiff and you lose feeling if you're putting, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 and more bar on the pedal. So it was hard for me to maximize the braking and I couldn't see why sometimes I was overshooting a bit on the, on the corners. And with the hydraulic pedals, all of that went away. Um, the stroke was consistent from A to Z. One feeling all the way. The modulation was still very good. In the beginning, it was a bit too soft for me and it actually felt just like the Hussing belt. So I was like, okay, to be honest, again, on my bias, I like the Hussing belt aesthetic. I like the way it looks. And if they feel the same, I prefer to choose that, right? Because the packaging is a bit neater, the program in the back, it's a bit cleaner. But once we dialed this into what I liked, um, the feeling of the stroke from A to Z was perfect um, for my feeling. Um, for example, Sammy likes it a little bit of a, of a harder, higher brake pressure. And for him, he struggled with what I felt. So that's just to say, it's very biased to how you feel. Um, I'm gonna put these down for a moment. Uh, oh, and one last thing, the heel stop on the Sim Magic is by far my favorite. Um, and I'll explain why in a moment when I show you the acid text, but I had lots of space for the heel. Um, also, if you want to run the clutch pedal, it's all on one platform. It has a very nice heel stop, not too slippery, not too grippy. So that, that was a huge highlight. We're going to go back to the acid tech now because in my statement, I just said, I believe in my personal opinion, I'm a fan of the hydraulic pedal uh, for overall use uh, with the cars I will be driving which is more of a prototype and a formula car style uh, car. Uh, the Acetec had a mega brake stroke, almost identical to me, to what I had in the end with the Sim Magic. Um, packaging is a little bit neater. As you can see, there's no spring. There's one cable and it literally integrates perfectly in. So you have no box. Um, it's just one USB-C cable straight to the computer and they basically come out of the box like this. So I mean, it is very hard to complain. Now, some of the things I didn't like, because every single thing will have its negatives, I didn't like actually the grip of the metal uh, here together with this kind of uh, engraving of the Acetec logo here. Not for aesthetic, but when my heels are sliding up and down on this, it tends to catch a bit. Um, and it just, yeah, it bugged me a little bit. Um, I'd say the feel of throttle and brake was almost identical to me uh, once I had the Sim Magic set in this. Um, I don't like that if you run the clutch pedal, it kind of just is a stand along. It's not on the big platform. But then again, the positives, the programming in the back, it's back up on the same level that, as the Hussing Belt, uh, if not aesthetically, even a bit nicer. Controlling the lights on the heel plate, like the little details, Acetec went all the way. So. Um, you can't go wrong with either. I think all the pedals are good. I'm gonna give you what my recommendation is. And again, don't take it too personally because in the end, it might not suit you. If I were doing more of, let's say, iRacing or something in that way or uh, R-Factor that you have either ABS so that you don't depend fully on the end of brake stroke because you lean in the ABS at the end, I would go for the Hussing Belt. As well as on the GT, I think controlling pitch of the car, modulating the car with the brake pedal, the mid dead zone of the brake, the Hussing belt is amazing. So again, if you're doing more GT racing, I think the stroke is not exhausting, it's not too heavy, it's easy to modulate, um, amazing packaging, amazing pedal set. If you are unsure a little bit of what you want, I think the Atrax Venom is a great pedal set that you can't go wrong. If you're gonna go with what I think is right, I think the Sim Magic and the Acetec are pretty much at a draw. Um, 
for quality, right? Price point is similar. Um, programming on the Assetech is a little bit neater. Um, my personal favorite for me might be the Sim Magic with the bigger platform, the potential clutch pedal if you want to do some single seater um, launches with the foot clutch. Um, but again, the day you drive a GT car, you might want uh, some hissing belt pedals. So it's it, it's not an easy decision. Again, thank you, Sammy Flo, for having me. Every pedal you have here is amazing. Um, I hope that the advice I gave can help you go in the direction you want with those pedal sets because there is no uh, wrong answer, that's for sure. And uh, I will say, take some time, think about it, and definitely don't save money on your pedals because at the end of the day, there's a lot more performance on pedals and a good DDU unit because those in a sim are your tools of feel. In the racetrack, we have other things, but at the end of the day, your brake feel, uh, your throttle stroke, and the feedback you get through the steering are the only things that can take away only you know visual impairment. It, it really gives you that feel, so it, it is a really critical thing. And you know when you're spending hours and hours on a simulator training, maybe that extra 100 or 200 euros can make a very big difference in your performance. Okay. All right, guys. Um, I didn't finish exactly. I've just been speaking to Sammy because I'm obviously making my decision on which pedals suit me the best. Um, and I was saying. If you're doing mostly single-seater racing, I'd go with the Assetech. If you're doing mostly GT racing, I'd go with the Hissing Belt. And if you're doing a little bit of both, in my opinion, I think the Sim Magic is great because with the Assetech pedals, basically, I'm gonna take it apart so you guys can see really quick what I'm, what I'm talking about. When we look at it here, it's very easy to, uh, to adjust, as you can see. We have right here a bump stop, right? So this rubber right here is what controls the stiffness. You can change different ones, but at the end of the day, rubber only travels a certain way. So I really think this is more of a Formula Car setup um, where the Sim Magic, instead of a bump rubber, it's actually a spring. And with springs, you can change the stroke of travel quite a lot. So I drove a few different settings and I think it's the best hybrid pedal set between the Assetech and the Hussing Belt. Um, it means that if I want to go do a little bit of GT racing, I can throw on a lighter spring with more travel. I have the modulation similar to the Hussing Belt. If I want to drive the LMH or LMDH car slash prototype, which is what I actually use for personal training, I can put that stiffer spring and get the travel that's almost identical to the Assetech. So, uh, for me personally, it was a good hybrid option because I can just have a spring on my stand and if I change cars, uh, I can just swap it. Obviously, you can do that with all of them. As I said earlier on in the video, the Hussing belts, you can change the bump rubbers like that. But the bump rubbers only have so much you can do with them. You kind of have a, a set that you like. Um, where that one, I really have like two options. It's genuinely a hybrid. So, uh, I'm gonna be getting the Sim Magic pedals for myself. Um, I hope in no way that affects your bias because as I said, there's a lot to think about. There's a lot of types of racing that you might like and for example, if you're driving a, a rally cross car or off-road or maybe the F1, uh, F1 games on, uh, on different, different systems, it might not be the best option to get something with such a heavy hydraulic spring. In that case, for example, the Hussing Dots are probably a very good solid go-to. So um, enjoy. And uh, we have some questions that we're going to be answering now and uh, from some of the fans uh, and followers to the page. And uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a really great info experience for myself and for all of you guys. Les réponses à ces différentes questions, on les verra dans une prochaine vidéo. Pour suivre Gustavo, eh bien, on vous met le lien dans la description pour pouvoir suivre son Instagram. Follow Gustavo, il met pas mal de news de ce qui se passe bah, sur les pistes et puis hors piste aussi. Donc c'est hyper intéressant à suivre. Euh, vous pouvez aussi retrouver tous les liens des pédaliers qu'on a vu dans cette vidéo dans la description. Eh bien, merci d'avoir suivi cette vidéo. Abonnez-vous à la chaîne et puis on se retrouve très vite pour une prochaine vidéo. A plus Putain, c'est compliqué, hein